Welcome to this week's special presentation titled Seven Secrets to Making Money with VectorVest, Secret Number Two. My name is Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorVest, and I'll be your presenter this evening. Our founder, Dr. Bart Delito, has delivered the seven secrets to making money with VectorVest many times over the year, and it is a crown jewel in the VectorVest presentation catalog. It has everything investor needs to know to achieve consistent success in the stock market and ultimately financial freedom. Tonight, we'll revisit secret number two and show you how you can begin to achieve financial freedom by learning to read graphs. Tonight is the second installment in a series of presentations designed to help our subscribers be successful in the stock market in all market conditions. So our first secret was to keep it simple, lean on the power of the VST system of analysis. Secret number two follows in that vein with learn to read graphs don't worry, we don't have to become technical analysts to be successful. We can keep it simple. VectorVest simple. By far the easiest way to assess a stock is by looking at its graph. So let's begin by orienting our thinking. Orienting it to the VectorVest philosophy. VectorVest believes in buying safe, undervalued stocks, rising in price in rising markets. We also believe in selling falling stocks in falling markets. In pursuit of that philosophy, Dr. Delito wrote an essay called Vector Vest Simple back in December of 2004. And the pull quote from that essay is simply look at the graphs of the top 20 stocks ranked by VST. Favor those with distinctly rising price and earnings per share patterns. Avoid those with excessive volatility and violent drawdowns. It doesn't take long to look at 20 graphs, and it really is easy to do. That's why I call it VectorVest Simple. And I do recommend you take a look at that essay because he does go into more depth than my pull quote, but I think that's a succinct summary of the essay. And the approach is a visual approach really based on an idea that maybe you've heard a picture is worth a thousand words. We're visual beings very good at picking up patterns. And so graphs are a natural tool for us to use to help us visualize trends and patterns within price action. So beyond just the visual representation of historical data points, graphs don't lie. They don't spin narratives. They also reveal a stock's DNA, the nature of the stock. And what you see is what you get. If you're looking at the graph for more than five seconds, you're probably trying to convince yourself of something. So for many of us, graphs are the most intuitive and approachable place to start analyzing stocks. So what are we hoping to see? Well, as Dr. Delito indicated in his essay, we want to favor smooth price patterns rising from lower left to upper right. Now, the answer will vary slightly for differences in our temperament time frame sensitivities to risk, etc. Right? Usually, however, we all want to see rising price patterns, and of course, the more smooth and steady, the better, no matter what time frame. We don't buy stocks that are going down. You'll never hear us say, oh, we like this stock when it drops another $20. You never know how far down, down will be. The best way to avoid being trapped in a losing trade is don't enter it in the first place. So the first consideration is time frame. Yes, it's rising, but over the last year, last five years, last five days, last five minutes? A prudent approach, and one that Dr. Delito identifies, is to start with a one-year time frame. We also want to look for the price trend. We want to look for the slope or the angle of that price advance. How fast is it going up or down? How much volatility in that price action? So let's take a look at an example and establish our model. So here I've pulled up a graph. It is on a one year time frame, but I've purposely stripped all of the identifying information from it just so we can look at the graph itself. So the first concept we wanted to talk about was time frame. And here we're looking at one year, which is a more prudent to kind of conservative time frame. So Shorter term traders, swing traders, day traders might look at shorter time frames because their objective isn't to hold this stock as long as they can, like a position trade or an investment. Their objective is to hold it from days to weeks or maybe the, the next 20 minutes. 
But whether your time frame is short term or long term, you're looking for stocks that are rising in that time frame. Next, let's talk about trend. So stock price can trend up, hitting a series of higher highs and higher lows. So when we think about that, again, time frame is important here. I could look on a candle over candle basis, but I can also see these swings, right? These pivots as the price action in this case is rising higher. So when I see price hitting a series of higher highs and higher lows, that's the definition of uptrend. When price is hitting lower highs and lower lows, and of course I don't have many examples in this uptrending stock, but when I'm hitting lower highs and lower lows, that's the definition of a downtrend. When I'm failing to hit higher highs or lower lows, then I'm in some kind of a consolidation or sideways movement, a non-trending price action. So price advances in stages, advances, pulls back, rests, etc. We can establish trend lines for an uptrend if we connect the lows, we establish a trend line. And so stocks that are in persistent trends will be able to establish trend lines, kind of by definition. Now, an easy way to establish those trend lines if you're new to charting, instead of having to discern the pivots necessarily, try a short-term moving average. It often kind of works as a self-adjusting trend line on persistent price action. And of course, for downtrends, we would connect the highs and see how the crossover, the breaking of the trend line can be a good early indication of a change in trend. Next is the idea of slope. The slope of that trend line is an, is an indication of how fast that price is accelerating. Look at this time frame where we had a slope that was much more elevated than we did here. Prior to that, we had a period of the price action where the slope was even more shallow. Which sets us up for an interesting balancing act. Obviously, the steeper the slope, the faster price is appreciating, and the more we like that as traders and investors. However, those fast accelerations are not typically sustainable over the long term. So a slope nearer 45 degrees or less is thought to be more sustainable over time. So we'll talk in a little bit about these fast accelerations as being indic indicative of overextended price action. Now, if you remember from last week, our relative timing indicator is telling us whether or not the stock is in uptrend and how strong an uptrend. So we'll look for rising RT to indicate to us accelerating price action. And don't worry, we'll look at all this on some live charts here in just a minute. Our final observation was volatility. And you'll see it expressed in two ways visually on the chart. First is just the range of daily price action. And notice how on the pullbacks, the range of the candles expands. And that's typical for bear market or at least downward price action, is you heard the old saying, we go up the staircase and out the window. So down markets typically are faster moving and have higher volatilities in the price action themselves. And you'll often pick that up broadly across the market as a cross section as markets themselves become bearish. And I'd give you the example of the last year as my proof. Along with that volatility, we want to look for historical gapping action. If the stock has a lot of gapping price action, those price moves can be unsettling. So we prefer stocks that don't have a lot of gapping price action. And the third quality is the size and frequency of big swings. We have relatively smooth and steady price action, right? And that means persistence and direction, sure, but also when the stock pulls back, it doesn't tend to pull back really hard. It's not that it never goes down. It's just that those tend to be measured 
and relatively fluid, not herky-jerky with big moves. We favor that kind of price action because we recognize stocks don't always go up. In fact, we know that they're going to pull back against us. So when they pull back, can I still sleep at night? And hopefully can I hold through the pullback so that I get the next rise? Well, I find it's a lot easier to sleep at night when I'm investing in stocks that have price performance like this because they have many fewer surprises. And of course, in bear markets, as we just established, they tend to be more volatile, faster acting kinds of markets, and they provide their own challenge. So there are a lot of folks who just sit out. The bear market runs because cash is a position. So this is what we're looking for on the price graph, but we still haven't talked about the secret weapon. The secret weapon is earnings. Remember, earnings is the engine driving the bus. So not only do we want to see those nice, smooth, steady price patterns, we want to see them driven by smooth, steady earnings patterns, rising bottom left to upper right, smoother the better. Because earnings is the engine that's not only driving valuation and price higher, it also has a high correlation to sustainable trend. And it makes sense if you think about it, companies who consistently make more and more money improving their valuation and therefore their price, if someone decides to exit the position, there are a bunch of people on the sidelines waiting to buy that stock on the dip. So we see a high correlation of earnings performance to sustainable trend or persistent trend. Now, remember, we're also, also looking at a one-year time frame as our starting point for looking at these earnings and price actions. And we're looking for that persistent rise right up to the edge, to the right edge of the graph. Particularly in weak economies, companies whose forecasts for earnings are weakening or erratic are more likely to exhibit price volatility. And of course, these kinds of considerations more important for investors relative to traders, but traders can still look for stocks who are appreciating nicely that also have fundamental strength. That's how we define a prudent investor where we get the best of both worlds. So here's an example of the graph adding our earnings performance to that graph. Now remember, in VectorVest, we include not only historical earnings, but also forecasts by the financial industry analysts that are following that stock. So we include their forecast because we do want to know the future or consider the future prospects of the company. So we're going to favor stocks that are going bottom left, upper right, smoother the better. Now the key is all of this is relative to what else is available in the marketplace. So it really becomes a matter then of cherry picking the best candidates from any list of stocks you might be considering. So let's do it. Let's look at some examples. The VectorVest simple technique is a cherry picking technique where you take any list of stocks that you're considering and look at their graphs and choose from that list the best candidates. Well, what are the best lists of candidates that VectorVest offers? Well, top VST stocks in the stock viewer and our Midas Touch watch list. So of course, we also have the Unisearch tool and we have a lot of searches to find us great candidates and help us winnow down that list of 9,000 stocks we track to the 20 or so that we want to consider. But in terms of keeping it simple, it doesn't get much more simple than looking at the stock viewer or the stock viewer gadget on the home page to find the top performing stocks. So let's break off into the program. And let me start out by saying, just for context, we had a strong upward market day, but you can see by the color guard that we've been in a neutral to bearish condition for quite some time, looking at that color guard history. So our guidance is that we should not be buying any stocks at this time. So remember, our philosophy is to buy rising stocks in rising markets. And until we start seeing some of our market timing signals move to the upside, now is not quite the time. So we'll talk more about market timing as its own topic. 
But I just wanted to set the stage so we don't get carried away and go out trying to buy stocks into a down market. Now let's go looking for our candidates. If we go to the viewers tab, if I go to the stock viewer, here we'll find housed all 9,000 stocks that we're tracking, 9,181 today. And we're looking at the top 20 stocks and they're sorted by VST descending. We'll do our work today here in the stock viewer, but I did want to make sure that I mentioned, if you go to the watch list viewer in the cherry picking folder, is our Midas Touch stocks watch list. These stocks, by vir virtue of their being in the Midas Touch watch list, have met the Midas Touch criteria, which really tells us that they are in uptrend by virtue of that analysis. Coming back to the stock viewer, however, let's just graph the top 20. I'll click graph all. And I want to point out we have pre-built graph layouts and I've chosen VectorVest simple from the top of that list. You may need to expand the list by hitting the little double arrow. But you can see the parameters that come up are the parameters Dr. Delito discussed in his essay. Price, VectorVest stop price, relative timing, earnings per share, and valuation. Now valuation comes up taken off the graph because to include it then often compresses the graph. You can see very quickly if a stock is undervalued, overvalued, or fully valued. So we'll take that off and let's take off stop price just for illustration purposes. Because remember, what are we looking for? We're looking for bottom left, upper right, smoother the better. RT, certainly in the near term, you want to have accelerating if you're considering purchasing that stock. And we want to see the earnings pattern, bottom left, upper right, smoother the better. Now here's a neat exercise you can do to prove to yourself that you can do this. I'm going to simplify the graph by taking off RT. And I simply want you to look at the earnings and price pattern. And I'm going to give you three seconds to make a decision of whether or not you like the stock. So all we're looking at is the overall, overall structure of price and earnings. Are they going bottom left, upper right? But here we go. LNG, two, three. MTDR, two, three. PBF, two, three. CCRN, two, three. COP, two, three. SGML, two, three. VIST, two, three. F-A-N-G, two, three. I-N-S-W, two, three. D-E-N, two, three. Y-P-F, two, three. Y-A-N-G, two, three. E-O-G, two, three. P-D-C-E, two, three. G-R-I-N, two, three. M-U-R, two, three. S-B-R, two, three. W-T-I, two, three. D-I-N-O, two, three. P-R, two, three. Pencils down. So let's talk about some first impressions. First, many of those stocks have been kind of moving sideways with a bit of volatility in the recent time frame. Well, why do you suppose that's so? Well, it could be that the market peaked back in November and we've been in a bear market in that time frame. So we're seeing a lot of energy stocks at the top of the list, by the way, because it's the one of the few sectors that's still performing. But you can see absolutely why we prefer to buy stocks in rising markets because the broad market performance has such an impact on stock performance. Also, I think 18 out of the 20 had rising earnings performance. One was an ETF that doesn't have earnings analysis. So even though the engine is still running strong for these companies, the market is repricing the stocks based on market forces, not the financial performance of the company itself which sets us up for something to think about. When the market does start trending again, 
then we'll look for stocks that have been beaten up in this downtrend that have strong earnings performance still to resume their uptrend, starting to hit higher highs and higher lows again as a resumption trade coming off of the market correction. And of course, the faster you place that bet, the more aggressive you are. The other piece that I'd have you consider is that there are some graphs that you absolutely hated, some you absolutely loved, and some you went, eh. So let me pose this idea to you. Unless you loved it, it was a no. Only consider the graph patterns that you like. You want to approach that next buying opportunity with a list of stocks, you'd be happy to own any of them. Sometimes when you can't find a candidate that you like, it may be the market speaking to you that conditions aren't as favorable as you think they might be. So for the sake of argument, and this is not an endorsement, let's just pretend that you like the LNG graph and you were considering entering it if the market continued to follow through the next day, as did the stock. What are some of the other things we would look for in the LNG graph? Well, let's put on our RT indicator again. And we see in the near term that RT has been accelerating, right? We also see it spends most of its time above one. A factor you'll see with high CI kinds of stocks, by the way. But did you also notice how RT is kind of moving flat? We didn't go to the higher high on RT. And so price is also kind of flattening out here in the last part of the graph. So let's talk about recognizing turning points for price action because there are two ways to think about this and they're both very easy to do in VectorVest graphs. The first was this idea of overextended price action. So put on any moving average, heck, you can even use the VectorVest stop price. Notice how when the price on LNG accelerated here, how it started to pull away from the VectorVest stop price. When you compare the interval between the price action and that benchmark, notice how over the past year it's gotten to these historical extremes before it pulled back. Where was it here relative to those prior instances? Right, so a good indication that price action had been overextended and due for a pullback. Doesn't mean it has to enter into crash mode necessarily, but it's due for a pullback. So we are slow as prudent investors to enter into stocks that are overextended because they're likely to revert in the near future. Traders, however, will love it, right? They want to get into the uptrend, ride that baby up quickly, and then get out just after the peak. A different game with different objectives and different trading rules, of course. So we have overextensions of price. We also have a concept of support and resistance. And everybody has this tool. If you go to technical analysis, you can click on support resistance and add it to any graph that you're viewing. Click the button and just using the default settings, the system is telling me that I have resistance at our prior swing high and we're just coming up to test that resistance. And I have a support level here at 148.37. So notice how when I hovered on that line, it, it gave me a shaded area. So let's think of these as zones, not absolute dollar levels, price points. And notice the three circles. Those are the three reversal points that are establishing that line. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. What is support and resistance to begin with? Well, when price hits these reversal points, the more of them there are, then the more robust is thought to be that price level where people are saying market participants are saying oh well i don't think we're going to go higher here and the bears come in and drive us lower we come back for a retest and the bulls give up and the bears take over bulls give up bears take over bulls give up bears take over bulls say okay i have enough of this the bulls uh tighten their belts and we go and we finally break that resistance level did you notice how after establishing the new high, the market drove price back down to retest that prior resistance, which is now support? Price bounces off that support level. 
So the key here is when you are nearing that resistance point, you're likely to see a retracement, which means it's not a very good time to be entering. Now, if you're a short-term trader, you may be building in some kind of an exit with that as well. For the more prudent investor types, right? eventually that engine, that earnings engine drives us back up through that resistance level. But the real key here is I might consider pausing my entry here as I'm at this resistance level. Let's break through before I take the entry. I'll give you a day or two of price movement to get a cleaner entry to make sure that the market is still bullish on LNG. Now, of course, if you like this layout and you want to add support resistance to the layout, you can just come up to the layouts tool and save that layout. And of course, we also want to be aware of what's happening at the market level because that'll have implications for stock level performance. So, so far, we've only been talking about a bullish model to lay out these concepts. So what do we do with bearish trades? Well, we favor falling price patterns, upper left to lower right. So we want to sell risky stocks, low VST stocks with weak fundamentals. We want to sell overvalued stocks. We want to sell stocks with falling price. We want to sell stocks when the market is falling. So for more information on VectorVest Simple, we demonstrate it in our quick start course on the training tab of the program. And of course, we're also performing an in-depth course, a six-week course, which is forming now. But our philosophy, remember, is we believe in buying safe, undervalued stocks rising in price in rising markets. We can play both sides of the market trend, however, by also selling falling stocks in falling markets or stay in cash, which is, of course, a safe, the safest position in a down market. And that's the key. We want to trade with the flow of the market. We call that situational investing. The combination of VectorVest VST analysis and graphing tools makes it simple. Thank you for watching.